So in this video, I'll show you how to install this Sun of Smart Switch called the uh, Sun of Basic. This is the latest version that I just purchased in year 2020 Christmas time. So after purchasing, I find that it is very hard to use because you have to connect wire to it and I want to use it as a light switch on the wall but this thing doesn't mount on the wall so what I try to do is take it out you can easily take it out take out the circuit board and I added some components to create a light switch first I added a wall mount wall place for the switch so this this switch is actually taken out from here I'm just taking it out so it's easier to test and then instead of using this button in the sun off I solder two wires here in parallel to the switch so I can switch it on and off like this the second thing I did is I soldered in the DHT22 humidity and temperature sensor onto an unused pin of the sun off. So I find the unused pin here, checking these markings here. Assuming you can see here there's the O14. Uh, from the right, there's the ground, and then the fourth pin is the O14. That means uh, GPI O14. It's easier to watch this one. From the top is the ground, and then 16, 13, 14, right? So I uh, find that this pin is, is not used by tracing the lid here. 13 is used to turn on the LED, so I use the 14, and I solder a wire from here to the data pin of the DHT22 and I take the ground and VCC 3.3 work from this solder pack here the solder pack for the VCC here 3.3 and then the solder pack for the ground transmit and receive so I also created this socket that allows me to program a new firmware to the sun off switch. This program is called HomeKit Accessory Architect. It can turn your ESP8266 or ESP8285 microcontroller controlled switches into something that can work with the Apple HomeKit. And then you can control it by saying to Siri, hey Siri, turn on the light. So I find it very interesting. Also, you can report the HomeKit sensor. So I created a sensor here for the humidity and temperature. Let me hook it up so we can see how it works. And I connect to it using a special ESP8266 programmer here. This programmer has a socket like this that you can use to connect to a ESP01 module. So this small one is called ESP01 module. It has eight pins only, so you can connect to it like this. Uh, and this programmer will be able to program it. You don't need to press button to program it because it's all built in. So I can use this to connect the jumpers. So I need to connect these jumpers here. Let me make it bigger for you. I need to connect the jumpers like 3.3 volts, the ground here, transmit and receive. So I just need to line up the pins, same pin and connect it here. Okay. 
Okay, that's it. That's how we connected the wire. And the same label must match the other end where we get the uh, solder pad from. Okay. And be careful not to connect to the mains power at this stage because we are testing using the USB port power. If you connect the mains power, it may hurt your computer. Your computer may blow up. Okay, so you never connect the mains power during the testing. Okay, so now we've connected and I've already programmed uh, program it up. So it should uh, come up quickly. Okay. And then let's see what happened. Okay, it's blinking. Let me try again. Okay. Sprinking means meaning that it's booting up. And blinking, blinking, connecting. Okay, so you can see now it has this sensor. Uh, this sensor says humidity is 53%, temperature is 22.5 Celsius. Uh, you can click here and enlarge it and look at the other stuff. This is all in uh, Chinese, sorry about that. And that, that is the light switch. So if I press the light switch here, you see that the, the LED and the relay will turn on. You hear the duck, that means the relay is turning on. Okay. And let me try again. Okay. And at the same time, if you press the button on the wall, it will light up. And then your home kit screen will also update you with the status. Light is on. When you shut it down, light is off. Also, you can ask Siri to turn the lights on as well. Okay. So now I've changed the naming of the room so I can ask Siri to turn on the light. Turn the light on. Okay, that's how you control it. Sorry, it's all in Cantonese. Okay, so next I will show you how you can do it as well. Hi there, this is Billy. I want to show you how to convert this Sun Off Basic switch that only connects to the China website to reprogram it using the home kit as appliance architect um, to connect it to the Apple home kit and you can control it by Siri so that way you won't be having the risk of the data sending to China because it's all outside of China First, let's take out the Sun of Basic. You can uh, take this, take off the back cover easily, and then you find the circuit board exposed. You can take it out. That's it. There's a relay, and there's this ESP8266 port. It's a the light switch. You can place it to toggle it between on and off. That's the status LED. Okay, this is the uh, power input, and that is the power output.
Yeah, sorry. I reverse. This is the power input. This side is the power output. Yeah, you, it's clearly marked here. This is the out. This is the in. The input. Yeah. So first we need to identify the four pins that we can use to program this board. You can see here is ground, TX and RX. So these three pins plus the VCC, which is 3.3 volt pin here. So next we are going to shoulder a a socket temporarily to uh, allow us to connect the pins to program it. So we are going to solder this socket temporarily to these pins to allow the connection. Here. So this is done. We have soldered three pins for ground, TX, and RX, and then a 33 work here for here. So we can now insert the jumper. I am using this uh, FTDI connector that yeah, is built for ESP01. So actually you can plug in a ESP01 kit here. So if you got a ESP01 module here, you can just plug it in and use this one to program it directly. Just push it in like that. Okay, it's very handy. And you can also insert jumper here to do other things. I can uh, put a link for you to uh, see where to get this spot. I just cover it to avoid uh, short circuit. So at the end of the circuit board here, you'll find which pin is for what. I mean, just follow that and connect to the right pin. So I connect the four pins here one for the ground, one for the RX, one for the TX, one for the 3.3. So we just connect the right pin to the right socket. So I connected the green wire for the ground. The, this is the blue wire to the TX. And then the purple wire to the RX. And the white wire to the 3.3. So we just use the same name and find the white pin here so the green wire for the ground which is the ground is this one first pin and then the blue wire for the tx uh, let me see the tx is the second pin And then the purple wire for the RX. Purple wire is the third pin. Okay. And then the white wire for the 3.3. 3.3 is over here. Okay, so it's all connected. Just double check the 3.3 and the ground. Make sure it's not swapped. Okay, TX, RX. So, check this again. 3.3 volt RX, TX, and the ground. Okay, once we finish that, you can uh, connect it to your computer. The next thing we need to do is solder the wires 
from this regular doorbell switch to connect to the uh, built-in button so we can shoulder from the these two contact point here um, there's a, this one and this one just so the one wire each here that connects back to this doorbell switch which will become our light switch and then we need to connect this DHT22 humidity and temperature sensor so it has four pins but only three pins are required the VCC 3.3 volts the ground and then the second pin here is the data pin so for the data pin we need to find a free data pin GPIO pin from the ESP8285 chip here if we look at the the small printing here uh, from the left you have the ground 16 GPIO 16 GPIO 13 14 and then D3 D2 so 13 is already used 13 and 16 already used by the LED so we can use uh, 14 which is the fourth pin from the left that means the fourth pin coming from the left here so we will need to shoulder a wire here uh, to be able to use this pin and then we will connect a socket that will insert this DHT22 okay, let's do that thing is we need to uh, mount the DHT22 DHT outside of the switch we can't hide it inside because the humidity and temperature inside the wall plate will be very different from that outside the wall plate so we have to expose this one we need to cut a small hole here so this part can be exposed outside to collect the room temperature and humidity so we need to measure the size and draw up draw it up like that and you can complete the markings Let's see if it's big enough. Okay, it should be big enough. Then we can use the hot knife to cut it, or you can use the saw and drill to create a hole. Okay, we've completed the soldering. So there's two wire. The solder from the button here. That will ultimately connect to this wall mounted switch. And then I've soldered the socket for the DHT22. And I put a marker here, and this is pin 1. Pin 1, which is for the VCC, 3.3 volts. And then the data pin and the ground. So I soldered the the VCC. To the VCC in the socket for programming here and then the data pin to the fourth pin from the top here which is the GPIO 14 and then the ground pin to the ground pin of the socket here okay now I'm ready to do some testing so this video has been going for too long um, I will split it into two half the second video part two I will show you how to install the home kit and complete the rest of the installation. Thank you.